Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to very quickly model and shade a holographic projector. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's get cracking. Now, a bit different to my usual videos this time, as I'm going to include um, some of the scene setup and uh, lighting and then obviously move on to the shading. So I'll try and include chapters as well, so you can skip to the part that you want to see. Um, but otherwise, you know, just watch the whole video and uh, you might pick up a couple of things. You might not. I don't know. Anyway, this, as far as I know, is a default Blender setup. So unless you've made any changes to the startup file, this is generally what you would see. Default cube, camera and light. Now, mm, there's always arguments about deleting the default cube, but I am. So I'm going to press X on the keyboard and then choose delete. What I'm also going to do is reset the camera. So press Alt G to reset the location and Alt R to reset the rotation. Uh, now I'm going to rotate it on the X axis 90 degrees. So it's pointing straight forward. And then I'm going to press G and then use my mouse and hold down the control key so that it moves back. Uh, I'm also going to constrain it by just pressing the Y key so that it only moves on the Y axis. So let's plop it there. What I'm going to do is also reset, um, not Control G, Alt G, the light, then press G and Z, and just move it up so it's just above the area that I want to work in. I'm going to move to camera view just to take a look. Nothing there. It's because we haven't put anything in yet. So press Shift A, mesh, and plane. I'm then going to scale it on the X axis by, let's say, 5. That should be enough for the camera. Uh, I'm also going to scale it on the Y axis by, let's say, the same amount. And then press Control A and choose Scale. And this is applying the transformations so that when I press Tab to go into Edit Mode, then basically it will remember that. Press 2 on the top row of numbers to enter the edge edit mode and select this back edge, the edge that's furthest away from the camera and press E and Z to extrude it on the Z axis and again we'll do 5. Then E, Y, minus 10 and that's basically given us sort of a looped background. What I'm also going to do is rotate around and select these two back edges. And then, uh, am I? Mm, actually, what I'm going to do is select these three side edges and press F on the keyboard to box them in. And again, I'll do the same on the other side. So now when we switch to camera view, we're basically looking into the box, but we're currently on the horizontal plane. So, with the camera selected, camera, I'm going to press G, Z, and then we're going to, oops, I'm still in edit mode. Come out of edit mode by pressing tab, select the camera, press G, Z, and then move up until you've kind of got a bit of things um, in the frame, and also your 3D cursor is just at the bottom of the shot. And the reason for that is basically any new object is going to be put there. And I'm basically going to just work on this vertical axis anyway. Right. So I'm just using the middle mouse cursor, just a middle mouse wheel, just to um, come out of that and go back into, uh, what do you call it? I can't remember. Free, free floating. Now I've still got the timeline down here. I'm actually going to get rid of that. So move your cursor over this bit. Press the right mouse key. Join areas and then move your cursor until the arrow is pointing down. And that will basically just dissolve that away. 
Now I can just focus on this. Right, so for our projector, we need a projector itself. Just going to make something very simple by pressing Shift A, Mesh, and Cylinder. Now I don't want it to be that big, so I'm just going to scale it uniformly down. Just to about, let's say there. I'm also going to come up here with the snapping feature, select face and make sure it's turned on and then GZ and then when I move it over this face it'll snap to that. So it's basically now sitting on the plane. Uh, I'm going to tab into edit mode and select this top edge and press G to move. Oops turn off the uh, snapping feature, press G and Z just to bring it down, doesn't matter where, control A, no not control A, control B to bevel the edge, drag it out and then use the mouse wheel to scroll around just to give it a bit of rounding around the edge. Then I'm going to press 3 on the top row of my numbers and select this face, then choose Inset Faces, click to start this off, and then just drag it in as far as I can go. And then I've got the extra box down here. Now, let me move the screencast keys out of the way. Uh, let's move them up. Now I can increase it even further so it's kind of in the middle. Let's go with that. Now press E to extrude and Z to extrude on the Z axis and take that up. Going back to edge editing mode by pressing 2 and I'm going to select by pressing Shift and Alt to add to the selection this ring of faces here. Control B to bevel and then leave it like that. Tab to get out of edit mode and shade smooth. That'll do me. Like I said, nothing fancy, just a bit of random modeling. So we've got our projector itself. Now we need the cone of projection. So that's really easy because in the mesh section we've got a cone. Now it's pointing the wrong way for me, so R and then Y is the direction we're facing, 180, just to turn it around completely. I'm going to scale it down a bit, I'll probably edit that in a bit more uh, in a couple of seconds. Switch back on snapping. G and Z and then we're going to snap it to that little thing hopefully now it's snapping to that face but I want to snap it to this one so there okay back to the camera view yep that's looking good now we need something that's being projected, so I'm just going to use one of the built-in meshes, but you can use anything really. I'm going to use Suzanne the monkey. So we'll move her up, GZ. Turn off snapping. Scale her down until her ears are about the width of the cone, or just a bit bigger. And then move her down. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to change this. Go into edit mode for the cone, select that top ring, so alt and click to select the entire ring, otherwise if you click you'll just get one section. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah. And then we're going to move this up a bit so that it's kind of level with her nose, about there I'd say. So we've got a projector, we've got our cone of projection, and then we've got the object that's being projected. So the next thing that I need to do really is to um, start shading this really, but 
before I do that, just to continue on with the modeling a little bit, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to Suzanne just to get the detail a bit better. And I will shade smooth. Now, before I go into shading, I'm going to change my render engine to cycles and choose my GPU as the uh, render engine. In my viewport, I can drop this down to, let's say, 128. I don't need a lot of detail in the viewport. When it comes to the rendering, again, I can drop it down. Uh, let's, In fact, you can do math in here. So let's divide that by 8. 512, that's more than plenty, but I will be turning off denoise. In light paths, I'm going to leave this as it's currently set. We can always come back to it later. And caustics aren't going to make a difference, so I'm going to turn them off. Uh, right, so that's that. We've got the. I'll turn on render region and crop to region. Then it's only going to render what's in here, not what's outside, which uh, will make things less intensive. Okay, where are we? Okay, right, right, right. Um, yeah, we've got everything really so far. So time to switch over to the shading tab. I'm going to switch over to viewport shading and then obviously go into the camera view. As you can see, currently everything is a default material. There's in fact no materials assigned, so it's just a basic white. So let's start by just adding a basic new material. Let's call it, uh, let's call it projector, because that's what it is. And let's make it metallic. Let's give it a gray color it silver. Let's drop the roughness to say 0.15 and everything else can stay the same there. Uh, now for the cone we again need a new material. But what we want to do is get rid of the principled shader and add both an emission shader and a transparent shader. And then we need to mix the two together for which I can press control shift and drag these two together. Now I'm not sure screencast keys work in here. Oh, they do apparently, but I don't know where they are. So forget that. Let's also just get rid of these bits so that we focus on what's important. Um, that was basically as I showed you before. And then let's plug that shader into the surface. So we've already got some transparency going on here, but we want to have a bit of control over that as well. And we want to change the color and intensity of the emission shader. So lots to do. Let's start by adding a gradient texture. Let's pop him back here and the color we're going to plug into the factor. Leave that set as linear and apply a mapping um, node and a texture coordinate node. And for this one we want to use the object output from the texture coordinate. Then we want to add a color ramp in between the gradient texture and the mix shader. Oops. Now this light is very intense, the actual scene light um, for this. So we're gonna drop that down to 100 watts. And then we can see a bit better what's happening with this projection cone. In fact, let's drop it even further. There we go. Uh, yes, so the cone. So at the moment, this gradient texture is running across the object, but we want to change that. So we're going to use the rotation value in the mapping node, and we're going to change the Y value to 270. 
Uh, yes, 270. Next up, we're going to flip the color ramp. So use this little drop down arrow and choose flip color ramp so that actually that's the whiteness is coming from the bottom. Add an extra node in the middle of the color ramp. And then we're going to change that white value to a sort of, let's say, 0.1. And you can see that's made a difference. This one we're going to change to 0 0.05 and the black we're going to leave as it is. And you can see how that's kind of giving us a nice graduated shading. Now if I turn off the um, overlays, you can see better how this is working. And if we move this, you can see how that just changes it in the middle. So it gives us a nice different graduation. So let's say 0.3 as a location for that one. And then the black just basically brings that top um, graduation down. Change the interpolation mode to B spline and that will give you a nicer shade, possibly. Or just try out various other ones to see what's going on. Don't use constant. Cardinal looks quite good. We'll go with that for now. Let's take that all the way up. Basically, we're just trying to avoid getting a hard edge at the top. We want to look like this light is um, fading off as it goes up towards what we're um, projecting. Now, the strength we are going to increase, and I'm going to say 5 for now. And that's quite bright, as you can see. So it's also casting off light um, as it projects. And the emission color really is up to you. You can really choose whatever you fancy. Um, let's go for a blue. While we're here, we're going to go into the hex value and copy that because we're going to use that again in a minute. Now, for me, this is just too neat. So we're going to mess that up a bit with a noise texture. So shift A noise noise texture for this one though i want to use a different mapping node so d to duplicate and plug that into there and this time we're going to use the generated texture output from here to plug into the vector of this mapping node then we want a mix um, node to go in here so I'm using control shift and then right clicking and dragging across the two. Or you can shift A to find a mix RGB shader. And you can see that's now kind of mottled that off. Mottled that off? Does that even make sense? Uh, okay, let's go with it anyway. Now, we're going to leave that as 270 and we're going to change the Z scale to zero. We're also going to change the mix value to 0.35 to bring that down. And then, because we've now got that kind of hard edge at the top, we need to make some changes in the color ramp here. And that's just really in terms of location. So I'm going to bring that even more forward. Let's say 0.125. And then bring this black value across as well. And you can see that how that kind of then brings that down. And that can even possibly be um, something you could animate later on. Whoop. Let's put that so it just touches the bottom of Suzanne. Like that. And you can see now we've got the kind of um, ragged edge. That'll make sense. Right. That's, that's the cone of projection done. What we're now going to do is tackle Suzanne, the monkey. And what I'm going to do is reuse. Oh, I didn't give that a name, did I? Let's call that Cone. So with Suzanne selected, either here or here, 
let me turn the overlays back on so you can see she's selected go through and select cone as the material but then click on this new material button so that it gives it a second name or number okay for this one we are going to just make a couple of changes we're going to use the object value for the noise texture we're going to drop the scale to 2 that's on the noise texture by the way sorry um, and I think everything else is going to stay the same what we're going to do though to give it a better look is go into the um, modifier section and we'll just collapse our subdivision we're going to add a wireframe and the values we're going to use are for the thickness 0 0.0025 offset 0 let me turn off the overlays because they can get in the way sometimes um, Turn off, replace original. I think that'll do. So if I zoom in, you can see that it's kind of a, a transparent or translucent material with the wireframe added. Now, to get more detail at the bottom of Suzanne's head, as you can see, she's kind of fading out towards the bottom as she hits that. What we can do is again make changes to the color ramp for this shader. Take the mid value along till it's past the halfway point. And then take the black solid value till you can just about make out the bottom edge of her head. Now we can drop the strength of that just so it kind of is more in tune with the actual projection itself. I think I'm pretty much done on that. Gives you an idea at least. Uh, we can always select Suzanne and move her up if we need to, if we think we need to. Um, and I can also go in, oops, get off. Where am I? Stop it. I want to turn on the overlays. We can also go into edit mode while we are here and just double check that um, Suzanne is where we need her to be. I'm going to scale that in a bit. Keep hitting my right mouse button while I'm up there. I don't want to. And you can see now how that's being projected. I think I want a little bit more noise on the cone though. So what can we do? Noise factor. Let's push that up. So if we push that up to 0.5 on the mix shader that's in the middle of everything. And then... Check that middle shader up a bit. What do we think? It looks alright, doesn't it? We've not got any hard edges on that. But we have got some nice variation going on around this. Um, okay, there we go. That's pretty much it for this one. I hope you have enjoyed it uh, and have learnt something new. Um... If you have, of course, please do give the video a thumbs up. Let me just render this out quickly. Um, render image. And there we go. So yes, as I said, if you've enjoyed this, please do remember to give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe for future content. 
and do have a plunder through the old playlists um, as there's probably a ton of stuff there that you'll enjoy too uh, and of course also please do let your friends know as well about my channel it's still fairly new but I'm still growing fast so that's great I do appreciate everything uh, and any questions just leave them below the video right that's it for now thanks see you next time